what we have here is a kinetics problem and we're going to calculate reaction rates, specifically average reaction rates. So consider the following reaction. We have A going to B. It's about as simple a reaction as you can get. You got for every molecule A, you produce the molecule of B. Okay? So we're going to add 0.365 moles to a flask and measure the concentration of A over time, assuming the volume doesn't change. The assumption actually makes our calculations a little bit easier. Now, here's the data that we collected, and this is the concentration of A in moles at 0 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And so we have this set up here. So the first thing we want to do is, well, what happens to the concentration of B? So we're going to calculate B assuming no B to start with for each time. Now, if we didn't assume there was no B to start with, we would just add that in, okay? So, Now part B asks us to calculate the average rate of disappearance of A at each interval. An interval is being any difference of time. So we're going to say our intervals between 0 and 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, and 30 to 40. So we want the average rate of disappearance. And our average rate of disappearance is going to be given by the rate is the change in concentration of A for every change in time and we can calculate that out as any arbitrary second A minus the concentration of the first A divided by the time at time two and the time at time one. So from zero to 10 minutes, this would be 0 0.105, there's our, there's our concentration number two minus our concentration at number one, 365, divided by our change in time, which is 10 minus 0 minutes, and that gives us minus 0 0.260. Let's go ahead and put that in scientific notation. 2.60 times 10 to the minus 2 molarity per minute. And so similarly, we would calculate from 10 20 minutes, and it would be 0 0.300 minus 0 0.105, divided by the interval, which is 20 to 10 minutes, and that gives us 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molarity per minute. And now we can calculate 20 to 30 minutes. And that's going to give us 0 0.00858 minus 0 0.0300 divided by 30 to 20 minutes. And that also gives us minus 2.14 times 10 to the minus third molarity per minute. And finally we have from 30 minutes to 40 minutes and that is 0 0.00246 minus 0 0.00858 from our time interval from 40 to 30. And that gives us minus 6.12 times 10 to the minus fourth molarity per minute. So here we have uh, part A and we went ahead and copied back down the table here and we're gonna calculate B assuming no B to start with each time. This is a concentration of A. So the concentration of B is going to be really the concentration of A that we start out with minus the concentration at any specific time. Okay, so when we start out with 0.365 at time zero, we, we don't expect to have any B. So sure enough, 0.6 0.365 minus 0.365 is going to be equal to zero. So let's do for time equals zero minutes. And that would be 0 0.365 molarity 
minus 0 0.365 molarity. And so that zero molarity in B at T equals zero minutes. And similarly, we can do that also for 10 minutes. And we have at T at 10 minutes. Once again, we start out with the original concentration, which is 0.365 molarity. And we subtract out the concentration at 10 minutes, 0 0.105 molarity. And that's equal to 0 0.260 molarity at t equals 0, t equals 10 minutes, and at t equals 20, minus 0 0.0300, zero zero, and that is equal to 0 0.335 molarity in B at t equals 20 minutes. And we also have 30 minutes. And that's 0 0.365 molar minus 0 0.00858, which equals 0 0.356 molarity at t equals 30. And finally, for the last one, we had t equals 40 minutes and at 0 0.365 molar minus 0 0.00246 and that gives me 0 0.365 molar NB at time equals 40. And what you should notice about this is that uh, the appearance of B is pretty quick to begin with just like the disappearance of A is pretty quick to begin with. We go from 0 to 0 0.26 to 0 0.33 and then the appearance slows down because you know if, if you recall the reaction should proceed along a curve that's going to look like this for A and we should expect the, just the opposite for B. We should expect B to suddenly rise up like that and that's what we see in the data right here. What we have here is a kinetics problem and we're going to calculate reaction rates, specifically average reaction rates. So consider the following reaction. We have A going to B. It's about as simple a reaction as you can get. You got for every molecule A, you produce a molecule of B. Okay? So we're going to add 0.365 moles to a flask and measure the concentration of A over time, assuming the volume doesn't change. The assumption actually makes our calculations a little bit easier. Now, here's the data that we collected, and this is the concentration of A in moles at 0 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And so we have this set up here. So the first thing we want to do is, well, what happens to the concentration of B? So we're going to calculate B assuming no B to start with for each time. Now, if we didn't assume there was no B to start with, we would just add that in, okay? So 